G'day and welcome to the Ball Boys AFL Fantasy Podcast. And is this thing on? We are going live talking to you guys about round five, captains, trade targets, talking about your questions and plans for future weeks. Let's go. Hopefully this out works. Hodges done it from nowhere. G'day and welcome to the Ball Boys AFL Fantasy Podcast. We are live and uh, nothing happened before this one. This is the first take. Yeah, this is you're seeing for this for the first time, and uh, you know we're on on like nothing happened. Oh, man, I I don't know how many times we can do the same thing and have different things fuck up. The mate. different uh, you know technical difficulties. We we come up with a new one every single week. We thought we had it good for two weeks in a row, it's and killer, man. you know what? I'm gonna this is this is what we're gonna do. Don't, don't bloody touch Oh, who you Streamlabs, chop- get the <laughs> chop. Our software sucks. If you guys have a uh, a better streaming software, we, we're get on the oh, lookout we're, because I we reckon... We are in the market for sure. Yeah, right. I reckon we've got to cut this one and uh, try to get something a bit better that's a bit more consistent because <laughs> nothing... We haven't changed anything. It just it just hasn't worked. I don't know. But anyway, we're on here, Luke. Oh, Hopefully man. the audience can hear us. Hopefully they can. Let's, uh, let's talk some fantasy and if they can't hear us, we'll just chat with each other. Yeah, that's it. So we are obviously recording this on a Friday afternoon and uh, thank you. I can't remember the, the, the gentleman's name who wanted me to do the whole show with the sunglasses glasses on. <laughs> I don't know if I can do the whole show because I actually need to read on my uh, laptop here, but um, I you know, thought I'd throw it on there, but thank you very much for your kind donation there earlier in the previous stream. So thank you. I'll chuck that back on for the big boys, but uh, let's talk. Speaking of big boys. Oh yeah. Last night. It was a serious big boy getting We had last the night, biggest of boy coming out. Max Gorn, 149. Are you, are you taking that as a vice captain, Luke? Oh, I've got Bond to come, so it's, it'll be a flip of the coin whether I whether I take the one forty nine. What about you, Mark? Uh, I think I'll, I think I'll sneak that one away. Uh, yes. Pretty, so no, that's obviously uh, my biggest vice captain or captain score of the year. So uh, we both had him on there. He was number yeah. five in the big boys uh, countdown top ten. So he did sneak into the top five. What uh, do you reckon? We get Calvin on board to help with the. Uh Tech difficulties. Mate, anything <laughs> honestly, you can't be worse. So <laughs> let's see how we go. But um but yeah, big maxi, we're both taking him, and I oh, think yeah. he'll be a very popular VC um captain this week. So does this change anything for those who didn't have him? Like, are you raising your line a little bit oh. for your captains? Like, say Bont goes like a one fifteen because you know Max went one forty nine. Are you like not taking that anymore because you're going up against a big popular one like big score. I get the feeling you might be playing with fire if you if you yeah. start not taking decent uh, VC scores. So I think I'd still be playing it straight back. But uh, fortunately, I don't have to think about that. But something that you actually do have to think about: you fell two k short of your tr- your optimal trades this weekend, and you had to trade Williams instead of Howes to get to Flanders. Yes. So you 
that did give you the opportunity to loop house. So some I've got people, house with the emergency score. He's yes, on there. Some people might be in that situation. So 68, are we taking that over maybe a Cloessi? Yeah, the shit thing is I have to decide this before the next game because the only way I can get that score on field is by putting Zach Reed on. And obviously he plays for the, the Bombers who play tonight. So... I don't get to look at any one score. I don't get to look at, like, how is 68 tracking as sort of like my, you know, my fourth worst score. Um, and oh, this is this is a fucking line ball I've ever seen yeah. one. Like, I said, I think I said to you my line was 70. He's gone 68. And I've just gone, uh, Trey, <laughs> the young gentleman wants me to put them back on. I'll check off for a bit. He asked, he asked how much, and uh, I reckon 50 bucks will get it done. Uh, so, I'll probably but, look better in these than you, but, to be honest. But please don't. You know, don't Jeez, see. any danger of bloody giving a clean once in a while? Fuck me dead. <laughs> Mate, they've been living up here since the last show. Uh, but I, I'm i choosing between Sam Cloessi. Some people might be choosing between House of 68, Zach Williams, and um, D'Ambrosio. Fuck. Uh, the, my team, the first week, my fourth, my lowest, my best score that dropped off was 73. Yeah. Week three, the second best 18 round, the best score that dropped off was a 60. So it would have been in my best 18 with week two. It wouldn't have been in there in week three, but I'm only losing out on five points there. So Sounds like a you problem, to be uh, honest, uh, mate. I think I think it's one that I'm going to take, but uh, keep this going. you could honestly flip a coin. Warning here too. So closely, the GC media guide has come out and confirmed that. So is, am I right in saying then Dimmer fucked it up in the post-match press? I, I was going off what, what Dimmer said too. Well, I, said, I thought he said, yeah, Cloessi said, but uh, I trust the media team more than I do Dimmer. So, okay, yeah, okay Dimmer. closely it is. We should have gone with our, our first gut. Yeah, it, it works better for puns anyway. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go with that one. It does. Uh, but yeah, I'm probably going to take that score. And if that is the worst score, you know, the best score or something, or if it does get dropped off, then my team's probably going pretty well then in that yeah. case. So um, if that's going to be my biggest issue, then I'm going to be happy to take it. So that's why I'm thinking about it. So yeah, he's going to he's going to come on field for me, I believe. What's going on in teams this week? Yeah. Where, reckon, what, where have we got started off? You, you're, <laughs> you're the teams, man. Let's lead off with Bevo. Oh, always. So just, what's he done? He's uh, he's I'd, cut Carl Daniel, right? I don't know if it's super classic relevant, but it just speaks to the fact that the guy's mentally deranged. <laughs> there is, there is There's no, a reason he's got a, he's got a segment in our regular podcast. <laughs> yeah, correct. There's no trusting this man. Caleb Daniel's done. I know... Um, Warney's got both Daniel and McRae in his draft team, which he, he absolutely what a fucking stitch up. kicking himself there. But it just speaks to the fact that you can't trust anything getting around from Bevo. So Caleb Daniel, mate, he could be he could be cheap as chips later on too, and he could be with another team next year as well. Yep, a uh, bit happening with Essendon tonight. A couple of key midfielders out, the Perk Archie Meister. Perkins and uh, and Setterfield. The main thing that I think. We're going to watch. I don't know if you can jump on it this week, but it is a big watch for me. <laughs> Next, You can't see it the best of times. Yeah, um, I don't know if it's a big watch tonight <laughs> is Jai Caldwell. How do you think this affects him? And if they are out like three to four weeks, even if he does look good, is it enough time to launch into it being the fact that maybe when those guys come back he's out of the rotation yeah it's interesting because he popped a sneaky good score last week as well and I think yeah, the fact, up, I think. like you said the fact that these guys are out maybe makes it something to watch the other thing that's interesting that we'll talk about in a little bit is I think that like quite a few people are stretching themselves to get to like let's say a Flanders this week leaving them not really much money in the bank for next week and there might be that opportunity to go to a guy that's not quite a keeper yeah. but someone that you want to just give you a couple of weeks of good scores so uh, I think um, we'll talk about it a little bit later but Caldwell could be one of those guys that we talk about 100% uh, for the Saints Windhager straight back in after his suspension um, I don't know if that uh, you know, does much but maybe he stands next to someone like a Tom Green at stoppages he's sometimes been known to do that kind of a thing uh, I think Jack Steele was quoted to say that he's going to be making sure he puts some work in, around him um, you know when there are at stoppages okay. for Tom Green so I don't know if that you know something that they're going to have to be game planning and uh, Hugo Garcia who's been scoring well in the uh, VFL as I understand he scored well in the preseason game uh, as well so I think he is a guy that as a downgrade target mm -hmm. he is definitely someone we're looking at tackles um, the traders were telling me yes, today when I was listening yes, to the pod so tackler. hopefully he's not um, stealing Jack's tackles where's that bloody thing <laughs> it's too late mate. <laughs> it's, too it's too late, late. no no it's never it's, too late got through the key for that one all right, yeah, we'll move on. Uh, the next big name in, and another watch for Ooh, me, yeah. Saw Walsh. We got here in the uh, the 
It's an upside down notes. M, mate. Sammy Walsh. Now, he is coming back in, and he is someone that, in the past, comes back in and uh, starts with a bang. So... Well, I, I reckon there's a chance he would have started in a lot of people's starting sides had he not, yep. of course, Definitely. injury concerns. But yep. then the, the buy was the big thing. So I think a lot of people are going to have uh, eyes on what Walsh does this week for sure. We've got a, we got a little hashtag source from DT Talk, O'Donnell in the green vest. Okay, That's a, that's a nice little hot tip there. Um, okay, so with the Sam Walsh thing, he's definitely someone I want to watch. I'm not trading into him straight away. This is a, a rule that I've learned the hard way a few years back with his teammate, Zachy Williams. Um, traded him in straight away uh, and was burnt that year. So want to see these players play, uh, but he is someone who's going to be underpriced. Like he's priced below 100. Yeah. Um, you know, those premium midfielders, when you are paying like nearly a million dollars for a bond or something this week, when you get someone like Sam Walsh or one hundred fifty thousand dollars cheaper, it is uh, that's definitely something we want to have a look at. But we want to make sure that he is the fit Sam Walsh. He's not going to have any restrictions. Um, so yeah, what Cats, about Cats? Got a debutant. It feels like we we had no defenders. Now we've got all the defenders. And now they're all just coming in waves. So uh, O'Sullivan is uh, a little bit more expensive. How much is he? I is, think he's in he... like the two sixty. So was he a high range. draft pick? Is that two seventy? There you go. Okay, he, he, may, he must well have been. I, I think that it's obviously it's Probably a watch won't. regardless, and uh, and we'll see. He could get vested as well down at um, the Cattery this week as well. Yeah, so Before, we'll have to keep an eye on that one. Let's. I want to also just go to the <laughs> Sunday teams because I've got good news for you, Luke. Okay, what do you got? Your boy Charlie Lazaro is. Back in the is team. Is he back? He's back in the team. I had a sneaking suspicion that he would make his way back in. The I red also, dot becomes a green. Let's go. I saw, um, what was his mate, uh, the other midfielder that just drafted the same draft class? Oh, oh Phillips was in there as well on the extended bench, but he is Yuck. an emergency, so oh, he won't be troubling us there. Beautiful. Uh, I wonder if this spells good news for Colby McKercher as well. So he played more midfield yeah, against... Just um, yeet him down back. Brisbane, so... Get him out of there. Hopefully, if Lazaro is back in, that role is sort of yep. flipped. So that gives me a bit more confidence there. 100%. Um, what else do we have on the Sunday teams? Connor O'Sullivan is in. Um, da, 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 da. Tim Taranto injured for the Richmond Tigers. He's going to be out an extended period of time with surgery on his wrist. He, he was a guy that, I mean, like maybe not a 100% target, but certainly coming off his buy, he's yep. so, so much cheaper than, you know, even what he started the year out. I think people would have definitely looked that way, but um, now... The Tigers are just more fucked than they, they were before, aren't they? Oh, Tigers are cool. We're going to lose to West Coast this week. I can almost put money is on that it. Is that spicy um, take? No, that's not even that spicy, mate. That's, <laughs> that's a mild flavour take. Lemon and herb. What I think this is the biggest thing for fantasy purposes, I think Kane McAuliffe has gained a bit of extra job security uh, because they're running out of midfielders, man. Yeah. Like, we are absolutely running out of midfielders. You've got, you know, Liam Baker coming in back to the side, but, you know, he's not usually a permanent midfielder, but will be an interesting option again after his buy. Uh, Thompson Dow, who is allergic to the footy and, you know, he, hates tackling. He is the definition of a camel, hey? Yeah, he is so anti-thirsty. Uh, <laughs> just, yeah. Um, Are we going with camel? Cause we're going with camel. Camel. You know, if someone lacks thirst, they're a camel. They don't need to drink. But I Googled it, kangaroo rat. A kangaroo rat Don't is the... Don't be giving you... Ca- that's least. too much of a mouthful. We like simplicity on this show. Uh, well, we've got Calvin's out there listening to this. So. <laughs> we out the shade. Okay, camel. Camel. All right. Yeah, I think he's a bit of a camel there, uh, Thompson Dow. But Kane McAuliffe, I think, is maybe a bit of a sea sponge and has a bit of that thirst going about him. If he doesn't get injured the first two minutes that he's in the game, maybe he can make us some cash. So Let's see what's going on. After his buy, he might be someone we can downgrade to. Okay, before we go to downgrade targets, yeah. good segue. Uh, power porn stars. Mm. Prawn stars. Oh, oh, it's, oh, it's my eyes. There. It's my eyes that uh, don't quite get there. Uh, reckon smooth production quality today. I would agree with that. And Seamless. Needed to trade Roberts to get to Flanders. Didn't have the cash anywhere else. He Ooh. feels dirty. I'd feel dirty too. Uh, power prawn stars. Could you trade someone like a Zachy Williams instead? That's what I'm choosing to do. I can't get him from the house, which ended up being not too bad. Um but I chose to go Zach Williams over a Matt Roberts. There's every chance to me that Matt Roberts... Uh, I mean, he is averaging more than Zach Williams. Yeah. Um, his break-even is still lower. So even though he's not playing this week, I mean, there's every chance Zach Williams is not going to be the best part of your 18. So I'd be going that way. But again, maybe you don't have Zach Williams. So you don't have to feel dirty. I don't think it's someone that you have to hold. He obviously isn't playing, and he's there to make cash. And if you get him... 
you know, out to someone who's going to make more cash or if you're getting him up to someone who's going to score better than he's done his role. So don't feel too dirty, but there maybe are some other guys I'd go for beforehand. Okay, let's talk about some trade targets. Uh, we'll go downgrade oh. targets first. Who we got? Trade targets. On the screen there, you've got your upgrade targets, but downgrades first. We are talking... There's really one guy and one guy only. Uh, there's no one else really closey to him. Um... It is the great man. No, I'm not going to get it myself. It is the great man, Sam Closey. He is by far and away the number one target. If you are not getting him in, I would really ask why. Why do you not want to get in Sam Closey, who's got a break even of, what is it, negative 20 or something like that? Uh, negative 22. He's even scored it, a 95. He's 253K. Of, like The fact of it is, even if you... like, We, we don't expect him to get 95 no. every week, but the cash gen is just it's, like a it's freight going. train. He looked it's just really be, good. Like yeah. it, it, it wasn't like, uh, you know, a bloody my guy Harvey Thomas 100 yeah. where, you know, you can look at those little guys and, you know, go, okay, this guy's not going to do this every week. He looked really good and yeah. looked up to scratch. He's a, he's a bigger player. Uh, took some contested marks. Dimmer loved him, even though he can't say his last name. Maybe he, <laughs> maybe he'll learn after that performance. <laughs> um, so, actually, now that he doesn't know how to say his last name, I don't know about his job security yeah. anymore. Like, Is it Dimmer's job security? No, see you later. His job security. If you can't say his last name, surely he's not <laughs> entrenched in the best twenty-two. Well, but no, jokes aside, he is. You have to get him. I think he's yeah. a must have. Um, it, any other week, his teammate Will Graham yeah. would have been a priority trade in target. I think so. He's given us a nice little what was it sixty odd there. Yep. And defender mid DPP. So if you, for whatever reason, couldn't get on closely this week, I don't think Will Graham's the worst downgrade target either. Absolutely. And Charlie Combin is the other one who's also got a negative break even. This will lead me to the question that I'm sure a few people will have. Are we ticking off double downgrades this week? Because I've seen a few questions like that go around. What are your thoughts on double ground, double downgrades in a week like this? The thing about these early buys is that I think you can it's something that you can get away with in the early buys. It, because because we have uh, obviously best 18, I don't think if you have a slightly subpar week the whole competition's going to get away with you, get away from you yep. in terms of rankings. Um, if I had the the financial situation to get in a guy like Flanders and that, I would absolutely not be entertaining a double downgrade, yep. even if I had to move like a Williams to get to him. Yep. Um, but if, for whatever reason, I, I can't imagine the reason, but you just are absolutely strapped for cash and you've got no one to move, then mm. I think there's a, there's a case for it. I don't love it. I've, I've done double downgrades before, but the only time I've ever done double downgrades is the week before that I sort of picture it being upgrade season. So for me, that would have been last week. Yeah. Um, and round the first regular buy round because when you're doing that first regular buy round, anyone you trade in is going to have their buy. So I sometimes like to cash up on that week. This week, the only time I would say double downgrades would be worthwhile is if you upgraded last week. And that actually, with hindsight, was probably the play. We were sort some, of saying... Some people know, did. Some people did. Uh, so if you upgraded last week and I'm talking about a genuine upgrade like a rookie Flanders. down and a Jordan up you know yep. like that that kind of thing you haven't just sort of sideways shuffles premiums yep. or anything like that so if you did a genuine rookie down uh, mid price or a rookie up and you got a premium in and then this week you can double downgrade I think that's a great play because you're not giving up anything but because it's now upgrade season if you're not making an upgrade even though it's only best 18 you're going to lose out points because the people upgrading, they're more than likely getting a ceiling player. Yeah. And that's what this these two weeks are all about. It's getting those extra players that have ceiling in. Maybe even a bond. Maybe even a bond for bond someone who's lucky and all cashed up. It's going to make my uh, Friday night So good. I still think if you can get the upgrade, get it done. Even if it's not like a big dog upgrade, make your team better week on, week out. Um, I still think Graham especially is someone that we could potentially look at again next week. I don't think he's going to shoot up another... 70k or something like that he might still be under 300 and that's that's still doable i think for a downgrade next week especially if he looks good in the role and yeah and cash and looks solid um hens has got a question there about lacocious well it's a good segue because we've got the trade targets for the upgrades on yeah, the screen lacocious here, so is, is in my top five we're going to talk about him in a little bit but who you got at the top oh he's moved down a bit but at the, at the top i've got sam flanders he there's not too much we need to talk about him he's you know on everyone's lips i think it's um you know top one or two defenders, uh, sorry, forwards, playing defence. Um, I think that's an easy one there. Rowan Marshall, what, we didn't what about, speak about him. What about the potential for a little bit of attention a coming from this way? Yeah. I, 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 maybe that's a little bit of a beat up, but the fact of the matter is I, I think 
that position is one of the easiest to to nullify out of the game as well. If you've got like an inside midfield role, it's a little bit harder. You can still get those tackles and whatnot. Yeah. But we know that half back role is not fruitful in tackles whatsoever. Would he be would he be the guy you would tag? Like of the Gold Coast Suns? Is I he the, the way, most influential? The way he looked last week, I think, and I think they're setting him up to be that influential player in that role. So I can see that if he starts to get a heap of the pill and he's distributing well, I can see there being attention going to him. If people were saying, is that a reason enough not to trade him in this week? I don't think I would say. I don't think it is. I think there's every chance he's not tagged. And even if he is, it's a long season. Like you're getting in a player who's going to be the top of his line. Yeah. Um, so that's why you're getting him in. You know, you, you like the the instant sugar rush. Um, you know that you want to you want to get from these kind of trade in guys, but it, it's it's a long season, and I think there's every chance that he's left alone for the most part. Um, personally, if I was the coach, I'd be trying to tackle uh, uh, tag Raul or or Noah Anderson. I think they're a bit more damaging. Uh, Anderson, I, you're not tagging Raul, not with uh, what Raul does. Yeah, you probably can't. Uh, number two, I've got Rowan Marshall here, which we didn't speak about on the podcast on Monday. Yep. Um, I think if you have a Brody Grundy, I would like to get him up to up to Marshall, assuming maybe you already got rid of a James Jordan. Uh, say you already dealt with that. Or okay. I also don't mind the, the move of going Jordan down to a Dempsey with a bit of DPP. Yeah. Sorry, not Dempsey. Um, Closey. Yeah. Um, and then getting Marshall in through Grundy because his run coming up is just enormous. You're going to see in the big boys later, he will feature very high. Yeah. Um, and I think that he is just creating a bit of separation between him and English at the moment. And it's going to be a unique play for those people who are, who are Max Gorn and Tristan Sherry. Yeah, definitely. So he's going to cover these next two buy rounds. So I think you want to maybe tr- create that bit of distinction between... Especially if you don't have Max. Yeah, even what Ross said coming off last week's game about the potential for a little bit of rest time and Tommy Campbell being in the wings I'm and whatnot. I'm not too worried. The, the fact of the matter is, like, we're all going to want Rowan Marshall at some point, aren't we? And so that is always going to be hanging over the heads of anyone who brings him in. So if you're in that position and you've set up, like, you, you've planned weeks ahead to have this Grundy become Rowan Marshall mm-hmm. at this point, you've dealt with Jordan, you're good to go, I wouldn't let that... Um, you know, push you off your, your plans. He's just he's just a gun. I he's think, such a gun. I, I, I've got him projected as the highest averaging player for this season now. Um, and I think I feel pretty confident in that. Number three, I have your boy here, Bonson Pelly. I've, Let's go. I've put him over Took Miller, who on Monday I had a little bit above him. But I do feel obviously more confident with him. He's got a great matchup this week. You're going to get that sugar hit. Oh, so yeah. he's expensive. Like, make no doubt about it. But I think this week... You can do um, you can do him this week, and then maybe look for it. You can trade him in this week. <laughs> Get your head out of the gutter, mate. You see, just do him this week, guys. Yeah, just do him this week. It's uh, good for team yeah. morale, and then and then you can get him off later. Um, <laughs> but. I think uh, maybe in that case, you might be having to look at someone cheaper next week because. Mm. We can't always just be looking at these top price guys. We're going to talk about a few of those guys next. We're going to forecast a little bit. Yeah. And then I got Tuke Miller. I think he's underpriced still, and I like uh, his role. Obviously, he's had a you know history of going one ten plus. And then Lukosius. Lukosius. He's um. It's it's still. You don't have to go this week, and mm. I'm not going this week. I'm looking, and I might be looking at it for next week. Um, based on what he's done, he's underpriced. The thing that still makes me nervous is the the moist run, the TIO stadium, <laughs> yeah. back to back. For a player like him, it it's not great. But he's got the role and he's potentially fifteen points under price in a line that there's dog shit other options. Yeah. Eighty six average, which is what he's done in this role before for an entire season. That's enough to be top 10 in the forwards. Yeah, definitely. I, th- I think if he does another, like, between, you know, 85, 95 score this week, I think it'll be something that a lot of people are considering next week, especially with the potential, like, shortage on cash for a lot of people. Um, I feel weird about having both guys that are effectively playing the same role or what we want. Yeah. So, like, if you've got Flanders, you've got Lukosius, both coming off half back. For, for some reason, that feels weird to me, but I think if they show like that they can both do yeah. it and do it well above, like you said, what he's priced at, then it's could be a no-brainer, but we'll see. Lukosius, because he's so cheap, you don't need him to go as high as you would want like a Flanders yeah. to go. Yeah, You know? Like you still, I, you I still sort of see mid-80s, but... Yeah, you do. But I, I sort of see like, if we contrast to maybe like an Essendon back line where they spread it around a little bit in their back line, you've got... I, I see like uh, Flanders is like the Nick Martin, and I know he's not healthy right now, but Lukosius is like the... Um, uh, Ridley sort of type where he's like 
I don't know if you're third tall, but like that intercepting, bit 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 bigger, um, yeah, but takes actually. kick ins, a little bit more of that switch kick. Whereas, you know, Flanders is right up the the, the back stoppages there, getting a bit more, and and that makes him feel a little bit more uh, weatherproof uh, in a way. Whereas <laughs> I feel like Lukosius, if it's a wet weather or a it could be moist bad. game, it's 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 not yeah. going to be good. Yeah. Uh, whereas I think Flanders, he'll still get his touches basically. Yeah what I'm thinking there. All right, so let's ask, answer Maybe. Liam's question here. Bonds or Butters and 129K? We haven't talked about Butters because, you know, I guess I just should yeah. have him. But. Look, I, I'd be a lot more tempted here. So uh, the toss-up I've been having is Bond or, or um, Took this week and then the potential like Liam has here to save a little bit of money for next week. If I didn't have Butters, like although Butters hasn't given us that big, big game that we were hoping for so far, I'd be a little more, bit more tempted to get on Butters. I, maybe that's a little bit of a bias because I just love the way he plays. But um, even in my spicy take later on, mate, I've got, I've got a little bit of Butters yeah, flavour to it. Well, so. he's got a decent run coming up. So he's got Frio, which is not the best, but then Collingwood, St. Kilda yeah. are decent, Adelaide love stoppages, Geelong, great matchup, Hawthorne, Awesome, awesome matchup, Melbourne, North yeah. Melbourne. Awesome matchup. So, still got a friendly run coming up, and I just, I do personally also feel more confident with his scoring than I do a Tuke Miller's scoring. Yeah, um, especially with what Liam said here is the fact yeah. that he goes butters 129k gets Flanders next week. I think uh, that that feels good. Yeah, um, I, barring I, calamity. Because if you, if you're avoiding Flanders this week, you, you do want to get him in quickly. So, yeah, so uh, yeah. Luke, That's, um, Luke has got a question here. Um, can you get him out of the woods? Ah, uh, good one. I like it. Um, I per, I am taking Houses sixty eight, but depending on how confident you are on maybe your bottom end of your team, you can look to take it on. I don't think it's going to ruin your week either way. I, I think we're talking, you know, minimal points lost or gained in in this kind of a call. Yeah. The way I see it is if you. Worst player getting dropped off is 68. Your team's going pretty good. So if, if you're taking that score and it and it means that it is one of your best best 18, then you've saved yourself from a worse result. So I'm, I'm taking it just with the that kind of mindset in mind. But it is it is pretty tough. Can we get to our favourite segment? Let's go. Oh, which Jesus? Where are me? Where are oh, me, sort it out, mate. I've already got the graphic on the screen. You, you got me. You got me going. Oh, he doesn't even have his glasses. <laughs> Too many props and sounds going on now, mate. <laughs> but the big boys. That was dog shit. All right. Like we said before, Rowan Marshall is up the top <laughs> of my trade targets, and he is at the very top of the big boys. Number one up I against I didn't even get to dance because you were... Okay, ready? And it's the... Because I was waiting for you to sort out your glasses. Shit, mate. I didn't get to... Fucking boogie. Let's go. All right. So Rowan Marshall, he is the number one big boy. He is going up against uh, the Giants. And so far this season, the single best matchup in footy is the Rucks versus the Giants. They are at oh the moment God. giving up a an average of an extra 16 and a half points in the last five games. <laughs> what's his average, fuck? Like, uh, so what's his average of? But he's actually he's actually had a tough a uh, few matchups, so I think and his average is actually unders of what he's going to do. So his average is at moment 114. So you're getting 130 guaranteed. So you're, you're probably getting at least 130. That oh, I'd lock is it a in. big, big uh, boy. That's a big, big boy. So he is... <laughs> sorry, I misspoke. 17.2 points and 100% of Ruckman have gone over their average so far this season. So is that... That's either the biggest balls of all time or you, that's a certainty. Well, we'll, that we'll, have, we'll have to find out. <laughs> I don't have him, so make that what you will. <laughs> um, number two, I have Marcus bonson Pelody, your guy who's coming into your side. So he is yeah. guaranteed to go huge this week. That was a moz. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he obviously is playing the Essendon uh, team, which is giving up a lot of points as well. Giving up, uh, again, the second most to Hawthorne so far this season to midfielders, an extra eight points on top of his average. So again, pretty safe uh, one 20 plus, I think, this week. I so think my top two, I am so confident in these top two. Mors, 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 mors. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is like, uh, I, I don't know whether I feel like a dirty chaser. We know we're going to have to have Bont at some point. And so like the maybe the um, general thinking this week is like, well, he's break even is now down around the 100. Like, he, yeah. are we going to get him cheaper? But there was a little bit of sort of camel behavior in those first oh. few rounds. And I know we saw C Sponge last week, yeah. but I, I've just He kicks it up for the big games, you know, like Well is Essen and I mean it's Friday night. It's Friday maybe, night. Maybe lights. that amps it up a okay. bit. I'm I'm going with it. I'm I'm locked in I think maybe so. that's not a one forty nine, but it's a one twenty. You know, like it just 
It's got to be it good. It gets it over. It's so got to be good. I think he's going to be huge. Uh, Zach Merritt, just based on form, he's coming up against a pretty neutral matchup this week, but he is the highest averaging player so far in AFL Fantasy, so he gets in there. This one was going to be my guy that I was going to roll through if Max didn't go, and that is Lockie Whitfield. So... I think the, the stars are aligning for a big game here from Lockie Weefield against okay. the uh, Saints who gave up that 140-plus score to a Nick Martin. I see him and Lockie Whitfield very similarly. And uh, Monica Oval, it's um, it's a wide ground. Uh, okay. So lots of space out there for some marks. Um, I reckon that, you know, a bit, a bit of cold weather. So He'd be a great VC option, but who are you rolling That's into? That's the thing that really makes me nervous. I'd much prefer him as a VC option. Who you know? could, so who could you roll into? That we, we obviously don't have anyone, but surely somebody uh, out there's got You somewhere. could be rolling into. So the other thing is he plays the same game as Rowan Marshall, Jack Tom Steele, Green. Tom Green. So a lot of other popular players. So could you roll into a Jordan Dawson? See, you could go into a Jordan not. Dawson. You can go into a Harry Sheasel, but the Geelong are actually a tough matchup for um, a half backs. You know who you're going into? Who are you going into? Hayden fucking Young. Hayden Let's Young, go. you reckon? Yeah. Whitfield into Young. Oh, I wish I didn't have the VC on Gordon. I would have loved to go into <laughs> Young. I don't know if I'd be doing that. Um, Ten yeah, tackles. A lot, of the, a lot of the captains are in these first few round, first few games, actually. So there aren't too many options there. So, um, But if you're brave, you can just chuck the C on him straight away um, if you maybe miss out on a VC on a bond or something like that. Uh, rounding out the top 10, I've got Tom Green at number six. Justin missing out the top five. St. Kilda a bit harder for mids. And there's been a bit of talk about standing next to him at stoppages. Okay. Nick Martin tonight against the Doggies. Can he go another Saints matchup? Under the could roof, be a mate. good VC option if you do have like a Rowan Marshall or something like that for the next day. Um He's a sea sponge personified, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, he's 100%. He is thirsty as they come. 20,000 so. litres a day, allegedly. Yeah, he drinks. He drinks for sure. Um, so he's a good option under the roof. Uh, Jack Steele at number eight. Just getting it done at the moment. And the Giants, again, I think he'll love those contested sort of matchups with the Tom Green. Harry Sheasel. He always sits at the bottom of my top 10 every single week. And yeah. I'm always looking like an idiot. But it's probably the toughest matchup for defenders so far. I guess. He's going 130, mate. I guess Geelong. One uh, week you'll be right. But. One one week, yeah. And then I've got Jordan Dawson rounding out the top 10. The Adelaide Crows just make me a bit nervous. So I'm losing a little bit more confidence in Dawson compared to the start of the season. But... Oh. He's the captain, man. He's got to step up, step up. I think he can still go decent. He's got a high floor, at least. So I think he's a decent, safe backup captain if you want to VC one of the riskier options. Before we talk spicy takes, 304 legends in the uh, hey. in the chat listening along. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in on a Friday afternoon. We're going to do some spicy takes, so make sure you drop yours in the comments. Woo! All right, let's go. Let's go into the spicy take. You're going to hit that button. Let's go. Let's go. Olé, olé. Did we, uh, did we get one right last week? Oh, yeah, uh, I did. I got me Harley Reid one right. So we're, just, we're trading for him so far. Well, you've been two points off and yeah, a goal off. So. I got it. I got it. Yeah. The, I'm sure I'm sure the, the, the audience here would, would give us uh, give us that one. No chance. What, 80 you, plus. what do you got this week, mate? This week, I am saying that Bales will love this one. Ooh. Adelaide rally behind their captain and they get a win. They beat the Carlton Blues. Sorry, Roy, uh, but I think they're going to beat Carlton. And the move that's going to dominate fantasy headlines... Rory Laird moves to half back, Ooh. puts on a show. So I think that's my spicy, spicy take. The Adelaide Crows get a win with Rory Laird at half back. Okay, very that's, nice. That's my spicy take. I reckon they need to do it too. If I was coaching, that's what I would do. I've got another wishful one for us. I said that it had a butters flavour to it, and mm-hmm. butters goes bananas. That's, butters goes bananas. That's my uh, tip with a little bit of alliteration. It's been the Rosie show for the first few weeks, and butters has. has been... Mm, underwhelming. Well, he's had so one bad score. The rest I'm of going solid. Butters, 130, and uh, Hayden Young as well. Same game. <laughs> just, just to lob it in there. Let's All go. Right. That's an interesting Let's one. Obviously, go. Brayshaw went pretty big last week with them. Looking, I'm um, oh, sorry. No, I'm looking at the wrong team. Anyway, ignore me. Uh, let's talk about uh, your questions, guys. And it is that time of the show where we do remind you guys that this podcast is sponsored by Q Platforms. Uh, head over to askmeonq.com forward slash ball boys if you want your question guaranteed answered. Uh, if you want to get uh, an audio response. Actually, there's a new feature at the moment where you can go and look at and get a, a, a test, some samples of what it all is. You can have a look at some of the answers that I've already given some people who have asked their questions over on Q. Um, so if you want a, a sneaky 
individualized answer where your mates aren't going to be listening along to this podcast later and get the same information. If you want it just directed to your inbox, head over to askmeonq.com forward slash ball boys. The link is also in uh, the description of this podcast. So check that one out. Let's get to some questions here, Luke. Absolutely. Even if you've put the questions up the top, drop them down the bottom so that we can uh, scroll through and see what people have got to ask. Slipping Jimmy says he's going to be at the uh, the Manuka Oval at uh, tomorrow. So he's a Whiffled owner. So Slipping Jimmy, hopefully you can cheer as loud as uh, possible because uh, I reckon he's going to go big. Make sure he gets out of the box if you take those kick-ins. I know he does all the time. Beautiful. Okay. OG Eagles is asking Libba Miller or... Walsh. Uh, it's Miller. It's Miller. It's Miller. Walsh could be the pick, but I don't want to jump on the first round. Yeah. You could get burnt there, hey. I think of think these d- three, Libba averaged the most last season. We yeah. always just count him we out. D- disrespect. And I think um, Roy said a similar thing about Libba. We just tend to disrespect these type of players that, you know, for whatever reason. Guys. Yeah, for whatever reason we don't trust. But I think I'm still going to Tuke Miller there. Do you think there's a little bit I'm of an edge off his ceiling with the new Dimmer? Game Probably. I still think he's like a 105 to 110 guy, though. Mm. Um, he tackles. He, he does everything. And yeah. I think Raul and Anderson kind of elevating in terms of the opposition kind of game yeah. plans. I think that leads room for him to to just go in without any risk of tags. And um, with Flanders no longer in there, eating from that that pie of the midfield scoring, oh, I think that's a positive for him. So oh, I'd probably go to yeah, well. yeah. Uh, what do we got? Let's go. <laughs> how, how cheap does McRae have to get for us to entertain the possibility? It's, it's more about, about with how, it. Yeah, it's, it's not about how cheap he gets. <laughs> can he stay in the fucking team? <laughs> yeah, well, I can hear me, Caleb Daniel. But there's everyone has a price, isn't it? So if he's um, if he gets cheap enough, it'll it'll be make for a really interesting discussion, especially on that line. Okay, which two to start out of the three? Oh, this Posey. is a tough question. Zach Williams or D'Ambrosio? He's got no loop. Uh, all right. I think I'm going to pick... Will Ooh. Williams, and then I think you you have a shot with Closey. I think so too. On a best, yeah. On a, yeah. like I, a best 18. I, I think I'm off D'Ambrosio. I think Closey, yeah, he just looks like a better player to me. I don't know. It's a, one data point. One, we're, we're, one getting, game. we're getting behind it hard. One game, but I, yeah, I reckon throw throw a stumps at the with Closey here. All right. Okay. Uh, I've got a question about what are our matchups at the Content Creators Cup? Who, who have you got this week? I actually don't know who who. Do I, I know have? I know who I've got. It's it's no one very exciting. It's just some, have you a guesty? <laughs> nah, I've got his teammate in, in Bales the buy. Oh, is that why? Well, Bales the the beater. He's going these days, Bales which the very interesting choice of words there. Bales. Uh, I don't know if that's what I would have gone with, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I'd imagine you're quite the master at it. So. Uh, <laughs> Not that kind of beating, mate. You're sicker. <laughs> You're a sicker. Okay, who are you fielding, McKercha or Reed this week? Probably McKercha both. or I'm Har- fielding both, Harley though. Reed. I mean, I'll probably go both. Um, I, th- I think I I'd to choose. I think I'd lean on McKercha getting back into that halfback role. And even if he plays midfield, like he played midfield as a junior, so there, there's every chance that last week's just an anomaly. I'm gonna it. I'm gonna go Harley. You're gonna buck the trend. Yeah, I'm gonna go Harley okay. against Richmond. Um, even if McCurcher is playing off half back, Geelong is probably one of the hardest matchups for defenders. Um, but in my team, I'm probably gonna be playing both. So, for what it's worth. Thoughts on thoughts on Liam Baker. This might be a little segue as well yep. to next week too. So I mean, yeah, we should we didn't we got to circle back. To there's that. a host of kind of players that are like in that. Cheaper price bracket. They think a lot of people. Yeah, will let's be have looking a look at, at how much so he is. But the only thing is, I'm pretty sure he's got a really low break even, right? He's got a 40 break even, I okay. think, from memory. So 685. But also remember, he's going to be going into a buy, a buy next week as well. Yes. So I think you might be considering him in a couple of weeks' time, but you wouldn't consider him at the expense of a proper upgrade to a, a safe guy on the line. Would you agree? Yeah, I think the Timmy Taranto thing definitely helps. Um, yeah. You've got no Taranto. Hopper's still out a bit longer. Like, he's going to be have to be playing a high midfield rotation. He, I wouldn't call him, like, a natural fantasy scorer. He has the ability. He has a little bit of a ceiling, but he also has a scary floor because he's such a team guy. Yeah. He, he's a camel. He's a camel in the best kind of way. Play Do you know what I mean? Role. Like, he plays, he plays well... Uh, for the team and and isn't necessarily the thirstiest gangster going around, but he's also six eighty five k, and I'd imagine after this week he's probably over seven hundred. 
So it's not expensive, but it's also not as cheap as maybe some of these other guys. If you're trading him in, in round seven, I wouldn't jump this week again with that buy. If you're trading him in, you're going to want him to go roughly... You're almost wanting to be best six in the forward line there, like 85 to 90. Yeah. Probably better 90 plus. Um, I, I've never loved his fantasy game just because of how versatile he is. At least we get we get a week to look at it this week we with Taranto out and just see what that looks like. And then we get you know a week to sleep on it, so yep. to speak, and, and just see how things pl- you know play out. Um, yep. This one's a good one here. Massimo or, or Williams to took this week. Would yep. you do that? Or would you do Grundy to Marshall if you were in that position? I think I'd go Grundy to Marshall here. Okay. Um, I just think that, obviously, Grundy's not playing. Those other guys are playing, so you at least have the lottery ball of, you know, I can maybe hit a, a ceiling score here, yeah. uh, whereas Grundy also don't have that opportunity. And Marshall, I just think we're all going to want to have him at some point. And if you're a Grundy owner, and the biggest competition for people who have Grundy are p- people who have the Gorn-Sherry combo. Yeah. And if you can get Marshall to kind of match that Gorn, or if you've already got Max Gorn, you you basically you've got set and forget rucks essentially. You don't have to worry about it for the rest of the season. So be nice, yeah. I think both scenarios are, are pretty good. So I'd probably go Grundy up. Luca Doncic, jeez, oh, we've got a good out, Luca. we've got a good reach on our our uh, viewers here. Would you put the C on Whitfield Steel or Dawson if Bont flops as VC? Check the big boys. Uh, I reckon Whitfield is the winner there. Uh, Whitfield feels like a VC, but you could get a huge score there. You hey? could get a huge score. I mean, him sitting on the bench uh, last week is a bit nerve wracking, but he still came back on and turned up. So, look, if it's not him, if you don't feel comfortable, I would be going. What was the other option? Jack Steele or Steele Dawson or uh, Whitfield? I'd go Steele if you if you if you're not comfortable with Whitfield. I personally would take the plunge and try and go for Whitfield. I think he can go big this week. Um, but I just roll like that, man. I just roll like that. So, no, I don't. <laughs> Fucking loser. Uh, but yeah, big boy says. Uh, Simon, Ken Harvey Thomas. I can't believe he held his spot just quietly. Can he go more than 15 this week? The big boy, Harvey <laughs> Thomas. He's uh, the opposite of that. Yeah. Um, can he, what, sorry? Can he, uh, can he score more than 15? Unlikely. Uh, yeah, 18, maybe. <laughs> no What's good. his break? No even? good. Uh, what is his break even? His Sky break even is now, 13, mate. so you don't need to go Sky 15 to make it. his break even. So, what are your thoughts? So, general question here obviously, he's already played this week, but what are the general thoughts on Dane Zorko? Is it, there's actually a point where if he continues to be a top averaging forward, there's a point where we all have to pick him, like, yeah. whether, you know what I mean? Whether it's it, be now, he's expensive, is my thoughts. He like, is expensive and he is injury prone, but uh, you know, I've heard um, Roy on the traders make a good point, you know, for a couple of weeks that if you did go this week you getting him in that best 18 best week 18. where, where yeah. if he flops real bad, it's not as bad. But um, I think it's one of those ones where he'll become, if he continues to do what he does, he'll become one of those forward upgrade targets later on, but it's not going to hurt you as much when you got a team full of premiums. If, if he was 100K cheaper, I'd be much more you know, willing to think about it. Yeah. He's just he's just too expensive for the risk that he presents, in my opinion. Um, you know, like 8K more and you get to Flanders. Like it's... 8K. Surely you can find that some way. Like, yeah. um, so uh, just just the price uh, eliminates him for me personally. But if you went him, obviously it's looking good so far. It certainly is. Yeah, yeah. Um, you want to talk about your man McGovern? Jeremy McGovern. Um, is he still a good get? I think we might have missed the boat. 740K. Oh, Richmond. Oh, <laughs> best matchup for half backers so far. Um, what did he score last week? He got the 96. Look. It's the final week. The final week you can do it. Um, who's moved back there? I think, did we see... Witherden named or no? Witherden, I saw named and extended. I don't think he got there. No, he, he's not there. He's only in emergency. So, yeah, I think you can still do it. I'm less enthusiastic this week because he's obviously gone up another essentially 40K. But this is the final week if you were keen on having a punt to do it because Richmond is a good matchup. But after this week, I think the McGovern shop will close. For sure, for sure. We might wrap this thing up because uh, the Fanatics are back on hey, at six, I believe. Yeah, so if, um, if you haven't tuned in to um, Gesty and Bales, the Fantasy Fanatics guys, I think they're going from six. I, I saw the tweet there. So make sure that you just uh, smoothly transition from here over to the fan- Fanatics on Twitter. Make sure you drop a like on this video, guys, and hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you didn't get your question answered and you wanted it answered, head on over to Ask Me on Q. 
facebook.com forward slash ball boys or hit that link in the description below and I will send you uh, answers to your questions. So uh, make sure again, get all your loops all sorted, guys. We've got the best 18, so exploit those uh, loopholes where you can. Make sure you have your VCs all sorted and you don't leave your players on the uh, on the bench before you need to loop them on. And uh, happy trading, guys, and good luck to everyone out there. Yeah. Thanks. Except for... Huh? Go on. <laughs> you can say except for Guesty. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a prick. Um, but in all seriousness, uh, you know, thank you so much for everyone who's listening along. It's really sorry that we can't answer everyone's questions at the end there. They're coming in thick and fast, but, um, you know... Hopefully we're doing a little bit. Which is good. good luck, everyone, except for Bales, DT. You suck, mate. I'm going to beat you this week. And we'll see you guys on Monday. Catch you later. Bye. Bye.